Hey, what's up everybody? It's no secret that we're all under extraordinary amounts of stress. That's COVID stress and anxiety, and there's just no sign of it lifting anytime soon. So today we're going to talk about conscious circular breath work and how it can be used to alleviate anxiety, stress, insomnia, and even physical pain. I'm Risa Morimoto. I am an integrative nutritional health coach and your host, and you're watching Modern Aging, where we chat about innovative and holistic ways to optimize our health and well-being as we age. When you click on that little subscribe button and that little bell next to it, you'll be sure to be notified whenever a new episode is uploaded. You could also um, check out our website at thisismodernaging.com. So my guest today is Dr. Raquel Lopez. She is an acupuncture practitioner in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She uses an integrative care approach in her work that I admire so much. She coaches her patients on conscious circular breathing techniques to help alleviate emotional and physical pain. So today, Dr. Lopez is going to share how it works and how you can apply it to your life. So check it out. Hey, Raquel, thank you so much um, for talking with me today. Uh, this is kind of, you know, COVID has been on everybody's minds, um, for many months now. And I think that it's becoming, it's the anxiety levels are pretty palpable up here in New York and I'm pretty sure in Florida as well. Um, so I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about things that we can actually do, practical things that we can do to try to alleviate some of this anxiety and the fear that's surrounding the disease and, you know, not cause, you know, greater symptoms or potential symptoms or, you know, psych Mm -hmm. ourselves out. I mean, I mean, maybe you can tell me a little bit about what you're seeing and how you think people are feeling in general. Well, I always start with telling people just take a deep breath because what's happening right now is elevating a sense of anxiety that I'm not sure we've seen in a very long time. Uh, No one is very clear about what they should be doing. Mm. Although to me, it's very clear that you wear a mask and you stay a distance apart and you wash your hands Um, and you try not to be in environments where there's a lot of people all together. Um, And that is difficult for human beings to do. We're so used to being in an interconnected environment. So I always just take a deep breath, take a few of them, and then we can have a conversation after that. It kind of resets your mindset about, okay, I'm just going to be present right now. Um, And so what I see is a lot of that, a lot of um, bouncing back and forth, anxiety, what's happening, what's really not happening, why are people doing this as opposed to, okay, what is it that I can control in my environment that's going to make me feel comfortable and, and start there? Breathing is something very simple, and it's funny that I think that most of us forget to do it, <laughs> you know, and especially in times when we're really anxious, right? We forget to do the deep breathing. What is, what is it actually doing that, that creates calmness or just helps us to either think more clearly or um, why is it so important? One, because if we don't breathe, we, we die. So that's one. Well, yeah. So I just throw that out there. <laughs> just a little levity there. I say that in, in practice. I say so. Whatever you do, don't stop breathing. And people just, okay. I'm like, okay, laugh because that's supposed to be funny. Um, (laughs) But what I I feel as that breath, it's it's oxygen. And so we are species that need oxygen. And you're you're so right when you say most of the times when we start to freak out or we start to have pain, we stop breathing and we tense up. And what I teach people to do is do the opposite because – we're trying to be expansive and we're trying to breathe through whatever's happening. And the more we breathe, the more we're able to uh, release whatever it is. I'll give you an example. Um, I'll have a patient who is going through um, a breakup. And so that breakups of all kinds, it doesn't matter whether it's in business or in the personal, um, it brings up a lot of emotions that are left over from childhood, left over from other things that have happened. And so the more you breathe, the more whatever's stuck in your body, because we also have that somatic um, reactions to things, you're able to release it. So Mm -hmm. most people will stop breathing when they're crying or when they're upset. And I 
um, coach people to continue to breathe because you're letting that out. And the more you let out, the more you're going to be able to be calm in situations that you thought you'd never be calm in. That's great. So, yes. I mean, so how do you train people to breathe? I mean, Mm -hmm. properly. I I mean, I think it's also... Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, it's great. I mean, it just feels like something so simple, so rudimentary, but like that we would actually need training to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And are there certain techniques that you teach people or is it just kind of deep breathing? So the difference is if you have the uh, meditative breathing, the, the deep breath in and out, then you have the yogic breathing, the diaphragm uh, based, and then you have what is called conscious connected breathing. And it has its roots in rebirthing, which was Leonard War in the uh, 70s and 60s. And what it is, it's really connecting the breath. So there's no pause on either side. So you're breathing in and out with no pause at all. And so it seems circular. Some people say, oh, but I'm a hyperventilate. No, well, that's a totally different other type of breathing in which we're not looking for. All we're trying to do is wake up that um, system that is already innate in us that says to relax. Because we breathe, but we don't take in a lot of oxygen all the time. So what I I don't. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we, we, even when we're talking, we stop breathing. In um, situations, anxiety, we stop breathing. So I always encourage you to see how to keep breathing. No matter what, keep breathing. Even when you're upset, keep breathing. Because all that pent up energy that you have gets released when we breathe. And so when you have that open space to be able to not react the way you normally would, gives you an opening to be able to react in a more positive way. So when you're angry, we say things that we don't want to say as opposed to taking a pause and taking a breath and go, okay, it's crazy out here, but it's not that crazy. And I don't need to be uh, contributing to this, this, uh, the reaction. Um, friends of mine who have children who, you know, children at 10 and in their teens, Try your patience and they push your (laughs) buttons in ways that you didn't even think you could possibly be pushed from. And so my uh, client has a 10 year old girl who's brilliant. So that kind of debate tactics and I know better and you have great arguments that parents can't necessarily refute. But the reality is that you're trying to teach your child some basic parameters for their safety. And in doing so, you have to model the behavior that you want to see in your child. Mm -hmm. And that's a very difficult place to be. And so I teach her to breathe when in those situations. It's 20 connected breaths. So these are the tools I teach. I teach connected breathing for about uh, 45 minutes where we sit and we breathe. For 45 minutes? Yes, it, it's interesting. People go, oh my God, it's a long time. But because your body starts to really relax, it doesn't seem that long. It's almost, it's, it, some people say that it's the breath taking over. So yeah, we breathe and it's, autom- it's automatic, but there's a different type of breathing when every cell in your body has the oxygen levels at 100%. Wow. So that you start to feel tingling in your, in your body. Some people would say it's like a runner's high, those people who run, where you all of a sudden feel this euphoric feeling and things are clearer for you. So it's the clarity that you get when you're breathing that allows you to move through difficult situations, to be able to figure out solutions that you would never have been able to figure out because you're in it. So it gives you, for lack of a better um, word, space to be able to um, think, mm-hmm. be able to um, resolve things, whether that's emotional things, whether that's um, a, a solution to a problem that you have in front of you, or being able to be a better human being in uh, interpersonal relationships. So um, is that the type of thing where, is it is 45 minutes the key, or is it just a sustained amount of time? Is there something it, magical about that? 
period? Are you just literally counting your breaths? Or are you listening to music and you set a timer and you forget about it? Or uh... So there's two. We can do it without music where you're just breathing. So as a coach, I would say, as an example, you're laying down. And I would say, just take some deep cleansing breaths. And then I'll say, now start to connect your breath with the inhale and exhale, no pause in between. And they'll start to do that. So I let that happen for about five or 10 minutes. And then I'll start to really coach them because at that point, your body has started to relax. It started to go, oh, there's nothing to really worry about. I don't have to have that fight flight kind of feeling. I can start to relax. And in relaxing that deeply, thoughts come up. Thoughts that you may not have thought would start to surface. And then you have to deal with the emotions that come from that. Because thoughts are, are in, um, emotions are innate in our thoughts. Mm -hmm. So you think of a happy period in your, your childhood and you feel something in your body with that. Or you feel something that was negative that happened in the past, and you feel that in your body. The point of the breath is to get those feelings out so that you don't have to then be triggered to replay them over and over again. This thing happened, therefore I don't trust X, Y, and Z. This happened, so now you know everybody who looks like that I don't like. Those are the types of things that start to open up for people um, in a way that they that is different than therapy. So I make a very clear thing, this is not therapy. And there is a parallel where therapy can help that breathwork helps with. So it helps open you up for therapy, but it's not therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and what things come up is there's a difference between what comes up in your head and what comes up in your body. And in our head, we want to analyze it and try and figure it out. And the breath allows you to figure it out in your body and release it without having to, to figure out the source of the reason why this happened at this particular time in my life. Or why did that person act like this? Because they just did. No, I don't like that answer. What is the answer? So it takes it out of the mindset and puts it into the body, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. I mean, do you find, so I guess there's different, is the circular breathing one type of breathing and there's all different kinds of breathing or is that usually the standard? That's the standard. So I'll start with um, different types of breathing. So deep breathing. So I'm asking them to take a really deep breath in and exhale out so that you, you expel it as much as you can. And then I'll occasionally say what I call the box breathing. So you breathe in for four, you hold it for four, you breathe out for four, you hold it for four. And in doing so, it resets that parasympathetic, that kind of fight and flight, like all of a sudden you have this ability of a wave of relaxation. Mm -hmm. And in that relaxation is when we start to do the connected breathing. So we set intentions. We always set intentions in what we do. What's your intention for your, your breath? And people say, well, what does that word intention mean? It's what, what are you open for? What is the possibility that you could see that could happen out of this? Someone might say, well, I have had, I had a, uh, an argument, and this is, these are simplistic, but I had an argument with my partner this morning, and I need to understand why, why it escalated to that point. And so it's not me talking to you to say, well, why did that happen? It's you trying to process it yourself through your own body. Because your thoughts tell you why. That person, you know, your partner triggered you in the morning that reminded you of something that happened when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Those things. How do you process those things without actually having to talk it through? Um, and a lot of people like that because they've gone through a lot of different ways to kind of figure out the problem and they haven't been able to do it. And so now they're able to breathe through it and it gets surfaced and they're able to look at it in a different way than they did before. So there's a solution in that for them. Mm -hmm. It's like when you're breathing, things that come up are for the purposes of healing. 
And so people say, well, I don't want that to come up. Well, then you don't want to heal that and you want to repeat whatever's happening. That's right. okay. That's your choice. But if you really want to, then here's an opportunity for you to be able to do it in a safe environment and not then not be able to talk to somebody about it. So if somebody's saying, I just want to let go, you know, as, as broad as this, I want to let go of anything that, uh, um, that doesn't serve me anymore. All those tools that we had when we were a kid, and now they're still here, and I don't need them, but I still go to them. I want to let go of that. What is my attachments to them? And so in breathing, you start to learn what are those attachments. It could be fear. It could be uh, uh, lack of feeling worthy. It could be that you know there's a lot of anger, and then you get to release that. And so that's a simplistic um, way to, to explain what it is, but it's a, it's a process that people are able to utilize to be able to help them through difficult times or inspire them to, to be able to move forward in life. You know. So I can see it being clearly, obviously, very um, important during a time like now when we're forced mm -hmm. to be with ourselves and not get so distracted by mm -hmm. life, right? If we're forced yeah. to be home so much exactly. um, and with family members so much uh, that I feel like this could be a very useful tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's useful because, you know, we're not used to being with ourselves. We're used to being go, 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 go. And a lot of people go, oh, well, this is, some people believe this is a time for us to really go, um, inward and really figure out stuff. And other people's like, I don't want to figure that out. I, I'm okay going, going, going. Cause you know, this could be too much for me to handle. And as the old six, um, uh, adage is, is that you're never put in a position in which you can't really handle. It's only your mind that thinks you can't handle these things. Right. And right. so the more you're able to open up and be able to allow yourself to look at different possibilities. It's easier for you to move through and navigate those things you don't understand. So we're all in a box and we're trying to expand that box or get rid of that box because the box is self-imposed. So is this, part of, is this part of TCM? This, well, TCM has uh, many different tenets to it. So you have acupuncture, you have, um, uh, Qigong, you have herbal formulations, you have um, cupping. Uh, yeah, yes, cupping. Okay. And so, and breathing is part of it. Qigong is about breathing too. It's just a different type of breathing. So, Qigong is breathing in movement, and this is just breathing. Um, and people, it's, 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 it's simple in the fact that it's like all you do is breathe. I said, like, but you don't know how powerful breath is. Right. In all spiritual and, and religious, um, um, corners, breath is the most important thing of life. It's what brings you into this world. And it's the last thing you do when you leave this world. And it's the most important thing to keep you alive. And most of us take it for granted and that it doesn't, they don't realize the healing process, the healing capabilities of purely just breathing is. Yeah. So for a beginner, I'm just, I guess I'm wondering because like certain things are obvious, right? If you're, yeah. um, if you want to get acupuncture, you know, you can go to an acupuncturist and that sort of thing. But if you want to practice this, who would you go see? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you find one so, person? There are certified breath workers and there, um, you can find them in many major cities, but there's also things are called, uh, group breath work where breath workers will do group sessions. And they're mostly introductory sessions so that people can see what breath work could do for you and what, how it can free you before going to an individual classes. But, but the most important thing that any breath work sessions that you do is at the end of those sessions, you have enough that you are able to breathe on your own. So this is not always forever. But it is a tool that people can use to learn how to breathe during situations that they need to. And then come back and say, okay, I need a tune up or I need to, I need to, I'm having trouble getting through this and I need you to help facilitate that. 
So there's breath work facilitators throughout the country and actually throughout the world. Oh, so you would actually look up, you'd Google like breath worker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Breath worker. So breath for... work facilitation, breath work alliance. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So for someone... There's actually a good school. There's Sorry. a good um, organization in Philadelphia as well. The life of me, I can't remember it. The breath work center. Um, but there is in Philadelphia and it's one of the, the largest ones. Uh, oh, wow. I'm sure there's one in New York too. So for someone who's never done it before and they're listening mm -hmm. to this for the very first time, is there some sort of simple exercise that um, you could share now and that someone could just try to see, oh, this mm -hmm. is really interesting. I want to know more. Like, I'll try this. And then mm -hmm. um, um, I think the best one is what we call 20 connected breaths. And so what it is, is you're connecting your breathing for four cycles and then the fifth, fifth cycle is a long inhale. So it would go something like this. You go. So I'll count for you. So it'll be single in and out. So you go one, two, three, four, and then a long. And you do that five times and you can feel your body change. Go. And I still have yeah. to count with my hands, you know, so that I can count that it's not more than four, but you can feel the energy go up in your head and it gives you a space of, okay, now I can do this. No, you and already do start do to feel it. like the tingling or. Yeah, yeah. That's oxygen. That's really the breath doing its work. And people, and, and when I usually see people for the first time, I tell them, you're going to start to feel a tingling in your body. There's nothing wrong going on because mm -hmm. all we're doing is breathing. I'm not introducing anything. So what you're feeling is your body um, breathing in oxygen at levels that it hasn't done before. Simple as that. And then there are some times that they may feel some muscle tension. And then we just try to breathe through that as well. Wow. So is there a reason why you breathe through the mouth versus the nose? Or is there like just nose only? You know, because in yoga, you breathe mainly through your nose. Mm -hmm. um, well, you can do both. Not at the same time. So um, uh, there's a, a gentleman here who does um, breath work meditations in the morning. And they're a half an hour long. And it's through your nose. The reason you do it through your nose is that it creates a sense of relaxation and well-being in a short period of time. Because you only have a half an hour and you may be able to, if you have 20 minutes, you could do that. Uh, oxygen or doing it through your mouth, per se, brings in a lot more oxygen and it activates you faster. Huh. And so when you're doing the connected breathing, you could tell that if you continued it, you could feel that tingling faster. So the difference between the two, and then there's sometimes when you're practicing and when you're in training, where they'll do a combination of the nose and mouth. But when you're doing breath work in itself, you choose one of those. For a newbie, I usually do it through the nose. So it kind of gets them in the um, mindset of, okay, this is really relaxing. And then the next session or two, I'll do the, the um, mouth breathing because there's a lot more oxygen coming in from a, a larger orifice. And so there is a difference and you would get to choose which one would best fit you. And that usually is the conversation you have with the client in front of you and what's going on with the client. So if they need to um, get through something quickly, then I will probably start with the mouth breathing and I'll ask them to go faster. So they get activated and we can push through that. Um, and sometimes they need a gentle breath session. And I may just do a nose breath session. And it changes for whoever you're working with. So do you do this online now? Or is I, it better to do it yeah. in person? Well, because of COVID, I have had to do it online. And you can do it. So we do a Zoom room, just like we do with Skype. 
And I'd have the person and we'd talk about what was going on. And then I'd have them lay down. So it's an observational thing. So while they're breathing, I can see tensions in their body. And then I may ask them questions because none of this is about sleeping. So I just want to be clear. This is not about falling asleep. This is about actively participating in the breath session and what's coming up. Because people zone out, then you're not being present to your body or present to what's happening. Because what's happening is here, not all over the other place. Right. And so we want to keep people present in the breath. Um, so I may continually, if I see that you've stopped breathing, because sometimes that happens, I'll ask, I'll encourage you to keep the connected breath. And then there's sometimes I'll have music. And music is an introduction to help the relaxation as well as to help the rhythm of the breathing as well. And most of it either has no uh, lyrics to it or the lyrics are very emp empowering. So if you're going to have lyrics, it's got to be very impactful about what the words are saying. So it's not just any song. It's a song that fits with what may be your intention for the breath. Yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. And so how many weeks does do people generally do this for like with a coach or they right with the coach when they do it for 10 sessions and that way we can figure out what's going on we can make sure that you've got it going on and then in the last ones that you've got it that you can then go and go and do it for yourself that doesn't mean you can't come back and have me breathe you or add new sessions to it but once the 10 is over you may come back for one session or you may say, Raquel, I need a five session package and we can do that. But usually when you're a beginner and you come to me and I've never seen you before, I ask for you to commit to 10 sessions. And that way we get to understand what's really going on with you and how I can facilitate your breathing to help you through whatever it is. So aside from anxiety, what else can this breath work help with? Um, it can help with uh, stress. It can help with um, insomnia. And some people find that through the breath work, it helps them with pain. Because a lot of times pain is emotional. And if we can get through that, then some of the pain goes away. I have a guy who had, um, unfortunately had, uh, when he was a kid, he had a, a stake impaled into his buttocks. And, and so it, it missed his, his spinal cord, which was very good. But he was very active, and so periodically he'll have pain right in that area. And so it's healed, but it's, it's phantom pains from whatever has happened. And he lives with this pain or back pain um, all his life, all the time. And so when he started, now his girlfriend's the one that got him involved with it. So you know when somebody else gets you involved, you're like, whatever, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but he was open to it. And when he tried it, he was, he was shocked because he had done all other types of breathing. But he said, you know, this breathing is more physical. Like I can feel it in my body and I don't have pain right now, Raquel. He said, I don't even know what to tell you about this, but I don't have any pain. And I was skeptical when I started this. I didn't think this, I thought this wasn't going to work. And I said, okay. And he said, I realize why people do this now is because the more you were able to be present in your body and to breathe, things start to, debris starts to move away and to be clear. And I feel clearer than I have in a long time. And I said, well, he said, well, I'm looking forward to next, next week. And he, you know, he's telling his, uh, his girlfriend this, this story. And I was like, wow. So you never know what's going to come out of it. You never know where people are going to take you down the road of, you know, I just figured out my next product. I can't tell you how, but oh my God, now I've got it. Those things start to come out for them. Wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. If we just yeah. kind of be present. It's, it's, and it's yeah. amazing because it's so simple yet so difficult mm. for so many people. I don't know. Yes. Why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, because if you think about it, and that's why I, I, I coach people that, yes, we're going to breathe for 40 minutes. But in t because we're working together, if after 20 minutes you're like, I can't do this, well, then that's the first step because we're going to work up to get to that. 
And if it's not, then I'm going to ask them what's what's going on that in your mind, what's happening? And they'll start talking about what came up for them. And that's the start of really getting into the breath work because the next time they'll be able to go further and they'll be able to clear things out too. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, as yeah. we start to wrap things up, um, what do you hope people kind of take away from this? For the Because I'm sure this is the first time many people are going to be hearing about breath work. So I think the most important thing is that there are tools out there to explore, um, to help you through life's challenges. And it's not just what you think it is. And the more we open our minds to it, the better off we're going to see a bigger tools that we can use in our toolbox. And one is, so, is simply... How do you breathe to be able to clear the debris in your life or in your body? And breath work, breath, uh, conscious connected breathing is one way to be able to do that. There are many. This is not the only one. But this is the one that resonates with me, and that's why I teach it. That is so, so amazing. So, Raquel, if people want to find out more about you and your work, where do they go? So they can go to dragonflywell.com. Thank you so much, Raquel. This was awesome. Uh, thank you, Risa. This has been fantastic. 